Hello, my name is Stuart from the University of Louisville and today I'm going to talk to you about a device we're working on in our lab termed isomotive dielectrophoresis. Now before we get into the specifics of this particular device, I do want to go over the background of dielectrophoresis itself, so you may or may not be familiar with that. So moving forward, talking about dielectrophoresis, if you look up the equations online, the governing equations behind this phenomenon, you will likely come across this expression. This is the dielectrophoretic force on a homogeneous spherical particle, assuming that there is a dipole involved uh, with its polarization mechanism. Now we'll go over some of the details of this, but first I want to clarify what dielectrophoresis is not. You may look in the word itself and see the word electrophoresis. Electrophoresis is let's say you have two charged plates and you have particles in here that have a net charge of some type. Well they are going to move towards the corresponding charged plates for attraction. That is an electrophoretic movement. Now let's say instead we have an AC field that's applied across these electrodes well, you're going to have, you may have some slight oscillation back and forth between these particles, but you're going to have no net movement. Simplifying this scenario further, let's say that we have a neutral particle. Now, the neutral particle has charges inside of it, inherent to it, and they are mobile. So let's say at this instant in time, you have a negative charge and a positive charge over here. Yes, there is an oscillation of the AC frequency itself, but if you have a negative charge on the right, you're, all the positive charges that are built up within the particle itself are going to go towards the right. Likewise, for the opposite charges, you also have charges within the media itself. And let's say we have a very conductive media. So we have these charges, and those charges being attracted to the interface between the particle and the liquid itself. Now, in this case, the medium is more polarizable than the particle. So you have a net dipole in this instance shown here. What if you have a particle that is more polarizable than the media? So you have your positive charges on the right, negative charges on the left, and let's say the media doesn't have as great of a polarizability compared to the particle, you have a net dipole like that. Now, each of these particles that have these net dipoles, these dipoles are interacting with the charges. So in this case, the charges at the plate. So you have a force this way, a force this way, you have a repulsive force this way, a repulsive force this way, but in these cases these forces on the left and right are equal and opposite and you're still not going to have a net movement. Getting back to the expression, you've noticed this term over here. This is dealing with the non-uniformity, that's the del operator, the non-uniformity of the electric field magnitude squared. So let's look at what if instead of a parallel plate you have a point and a plate. So your electric field would fan out. The electric field itself would be greater on the left and it would be more broad on the right. So if you have your particle, and I'm going to simplify the drawings that we had in the center of the slide. So I'm just going to just draw an overall dipole in this case. So you have here a repulsion you have a repulsion on the other ends of the dipole. However, on the left, this repulsion is a lot larger. So you're going to have a net movement moving away from the point. In this case, this is called negative dielectrophoresis. Over here, you will have attraction. You will have attraction, but you'll have a greater attraction on this side you will have net movement in this direction, and this is positive 
dielectrophoresis. So there is the electric field on the left hand side of this particle where it is spatially in the electric field is greater than the electric field on the right hand side and the the unbalanced forces on that is acting on this dipole is what relates and translates the particle whether it be positive or negative dielectrophoresis looking back at this expression you have this positive and this negative dielectrophoresis is guided by this clausius mazzotti factor. Now the clausius mazzotti factor is a function of the permittivity of the particle, the permittivity of the solution, the conductivity of the particle, and the conductivity of the solution, as well as the AC frequency that's being applied. So from this, you can have a, if this value turns out to be positive, that's positive dielectrophoresis. If it ends up being negative, it's negative dielectrophoresis. So everything else with respect to this expression, this that we haven't gone over yet, this is the radius of the particle. So this is proportional to the volume of the particle itself. But really the interesting aspects of it is this, these two last terms. One here, this varies, and this depends on the geometry of your solution. So what is the significance, underlying significance, of the clausius mazzotti factor? Well, let's say you have a more complex particle. Maybe it has a membrane, maybe it has some cytoplasm, it's also suspended in some media. Well, if you look at and extract the clausius mazzotti factor, this is arbitrary values, across a range of AC frequencies, you will get maybe a curve that looks like this. There's also something called an imaginary part of the clausius mazzotti factor we won't talk about today, but it may look like this based on this particular geometry. Well let's say that this particular cell is compromised. Maybe it has a more porous membrane, um, maybe it has an increased conductivity in its cytoplasm. For some reason it's compromised. Because of that your graph, your Cosmosati curve, may alter to some, something else, whatever that alteration may be, but you want to be able to determine what has altered in this cell to get to this particular curve. So what has altered? What has changed? What is compromised? And you can use this with a detailed spectra of the clausius mazzotti factor. Some examples of particles that have been used and analyzed, whether it be sorted or manipulated or um, with respect to the clausius mazzotti factor and dielectrophoresis, you have live and dead bacteria that's in use, cancer sublines, healthy and damaged phytoplankton. This is just a short list of things that have been manipulated with dielectrophoresis. So some techniques that utilize the Klaus-Mazzotti factor, if you choose a particular frequency to maybe you want to sort cells, you want to sort a live cell versus a dead cell, you could you select your particular frequency and do that. You can sort, you can trap, you can selectively concentrate. This has all been done with dielectrophoresis. However, our particular case, we talked about the importance of a detailed spectra of the Klaus-Mazzotti factor in order to analyze. And not only do we want to analyze our sample, we in particular want to analyze individual cells and see what's going on. Well, some popular techniques that are out there. One is a re somewhat recent a commercial technique where you put your sample inside of these 20 wells and each one of these wells has a particular AC frequency associated with it and what you can't see with these wells is with on the side walls of these wells are interdigitated electrodes if particles are experiencing negative dielectrophoresis they will be attracted towards the center if particles are experiencing positive dielectrophoresis they'll be attracted towards the edges there is a white light that shines up on the underside of these wells and a camera and sensor that captures the other side and from that and looking at the rate at which particles either aggregate or separate you can extract the clausius mazzotti factor and determine the overall um, fa uh, the overall clausius mazzotti factor for your sample now that's the key word here that's the overall or averaged result. You still can't track individual particles to see what's going on in here. 
but that's an that's an advantage of this. If you want to get an overall spectra of your sample, this technique works really well. On the other side, if you are looking at individual particles, you likely have to use a technique called electrorotation. You may see it ROT abbreviated in literature. Here you have your AC signal split into four, typically four, and have you, you have it offset at a phase such that you have a rotating, effectively a rotating electric field. From that, the dipole of your particle will experience some rotation either with or against the direction of the frequency rotation based on the AC frequency of the signal itself. So you have some rotation that you monitor and this extracts, without getting into it, the imaginary part of the clausius Ponzotti factor. Now, this is a very good way of extracting individual cells. However, the disadvantage of this is the throughput. So looking at the simplicity of the 3DEP system and the low throughput of the electrorotation, we identified a gap such that what if we could do individual cell analysis on a higher throughput, more simplified um, method. And that is our motivation moving forward. So coming back to this expression, we can find out what the, what the diameter or radius of our particle is from image acquisition. We know the permittivity of our media. And if you expose it, part of the particle to a dielectrophoretic force within a liquid environment, it will reach terminal velocity very quickly. And assuming Stokes drag, which is what we have in the denominator of this expression, you have a dielectrophoretic velocity associated with this. So the viscosity, we can assume that we know the viscosity of the fluid itself. So from this, the velocity is now dictated by these two terms. All these other terms are constant or known. Now this is what we're interested in, the Clausius-Ponzotti factor. However, this here can be a challenge. So we can track particles, let's say we put them in a dielectrophoretic device and we track them individually using particle tracking or particle tracking velocimetry, sometimes abbreviated with PTV. But this non-uniformity of the electric field, and it's not just the non-uniformity non of the field itself, but the non-uniformity of the square of the electric field. So it's really highly non-uniform in most dielectrophoretic devices. So we're inspired to say, let's create a unique geometry such that this is constant. And from that, any particle that is exposed to dielectrophoresis within this geometry will experience a constant velocity no matter where it is within our system. And that's an isomotive solution. Now, dielectrophoresis was well studied. The, the, really, the, the father of dielectrophoresis is Herbert Pohl. And inspired from a solution that he gave in his textbook, we've modified it slightly. And if you take, this is a two-dimensional solution, if you take this as your equipotential lines, and this is Cartesian solution, you, if you uh, substitute in V equals zero, you get a 120 degree line. For other arbitrary voltage values that you throw in there for some constant, this is a constant, K. Okay. Then let's say you choose two different arbitrary volt equipotential lines and you plug in, you can get a constant value of that term within the dielectrophoretic force. So this is fantastic. If you look at conceptually what's going on, if you have one of these profiles being an electrode, another one being the other electrode, so these are extruded, two-dimensional extruded electrodes, and you put your sample within this microchannel. If a particle experiences negative dielectrophoresis, it goes straight towards the origin. If it experiences positive dielectrophoresis, it is repelled from the origin both in the radial direction. Therefore, now that this is constant, the movement and the change in velocity is strictly a function if it changes, 
with the velocity change, if it comes from positive dielectrophoresis to negative dielectrophoresis, or if it moves faster in one direction, we can now extract this value without worrying where we are within the geometry of our device, since the dielectrophoretic force is constant throughout that microchannel. So what's the premise? With respect to the operation of this device that we are working on, we inject our sample within the microchannel, we stop the movement of the fluid, we apply our field over a range of frequencies, we track individual particles, and effectively, the isomotive dielectrophoresis is the translational equivalent to electrorotation. Recall that dealt with rotation. Now we can do both positive and negative dielectrophoresis with the tracking. You can do individual particle analysis, and we can track multiple particles simultaneously. So we've thereby increased the throughput compared to electrorotation. So we've done, without getting into the fabrication details too much, um, with we have different gap distances, if, referring to the previous solution, this occurs at the theta equals 60 degree mark, so hence the 60 in this notation. So we've dealt with different gap distances, we've dealt with 1.4 millimeters all the way down to 250 micrometers in our second generation devices over here. So what, how these are fabricated, and we're looking at different fabrication methods as well, is we've anonically bonded glass highly doped silicon to be our conductive sidewalls and then glass again sandwich it together and these highly doped silicon wafers are etched via deep reactive ion etching to give us close to, to very planar sidewalls and then we inject our sample we do some fluidic ports that aren't shown in these images we put some fluidic ports in there apply our signal and right now I'm just we're just going to show you some qualitative results more detailed experiments are planned later but just for the to sh demonstrate the concept of isomotive dielectrophoresis that's what the following videos will show so here we have particles going towards the origin once we apply a signal here's it at 34 volts at 100 kilohertz you also see pearl chaining occurring here because the electric field is going across and these are carboxylate modified polystyrene particles under these conditions they'll experience negative dielectrophoresis. We've also tested metal coated hollow glass particles when we apply our signal they experience positive dielectrophoresis and they're repelled here. So we've demonstrated with these videos the concept of our devices. There, there are, we are improving them, like these are a little bit rough along the edges, and there are some effects that we are currently looking at. But this just gives you an introduction to our device. But we do have a lot of planned work ahead. We want to improve the uh, performance of these devices. We are going to have a detailed analysis of them. We want to extract the complex Klaus-Mazzotti factor of individual particles. We have tests planned with phytoplankton and with yeast instead of just dealing with simple homogeneous spheres when we look at more complex particles. We also want to look at for anyone who deals with electrokinetic mechanisms you do get electrohydrodynamics the two primary ones are electrothermal hydrodynamics and AC electroosmosis, uh, electroosmosis. look up those details um, uh, in your free time but we are not going to discuss them here but contact me if you're interested in studying this um, we also want to make this an automated system to increase the throughput so we have all these goals planned we'll keep you updated I will post results um, on our YouTube site as well as Twitter as well as my research website so feel feel free to contact me if you're interested in this if you have samples or ideas and again thank you for your time